friend is right. You bumped the camera. Oh, what? Oh, Joel, you point the camera a little bit towards Chelsea. Yep. Hey, guys. Now there's sound. Now there's sound. What's up? Hey. Now there's sound. Uh, probably fine. Hey. Yep. That's fine. good. How's it going? Okay. We're good. We're good. Sorry about that. Uh, welcome to the live show for Game of Thrones. Live after show. Because it's after that show that we just watched. It is after the show and yeah. after Comic Con, San Diego Comic Con. And I can't believe we were there this morning. Yeah, Chelsea and I are coming like in hot. Second weekend. Lucy, oh, classic. Lucy really missed classic. us. Lucy, oh, yeah, Lucy is very happy we're home. We took care of Lucy. Yes. Thanks. Let's talk about Game of Thrones. Yeah. yeah. Let's introduce ourselves. I'm James. <laughs> I'm James. I'm Chelsea. I'm Joel. Slash you around. <laughs> Hello, brother. Oh, oh my man. God. Joel is the storm. <laughs> Do we want to oh just gosh. start there? Oh, oh. No, it's too good. We got to like work up to it. Okay. Caitlin's in Seattle. Oh, yeah. Caitlin's in Seattle not where now. We are. <laughs> She's in the north. Yeah. Um, the north is hers. Yes. Um, okay. Yeah, you have an outline. Yeah, Let's do you have, yeah, James, take us in. Yeah. Wow, guys, I feel like I'm I need structure. Out of there right this is now. yeah. Clearly, we're I off need to a great structure. Start. Oh, and great we start. started it on Dragonstone. A, it was a good episode. Did we start though? on Dragonstone? Oh yeah, with yeah. that storm, with that so Mulan esque opening with those sto- <laughs> dragon heads. <laughs> so this was Danny uh, and Tyrion. Kind of, I feel like there was a lot of recap in this episode. Uh, there's like a lot of catch up in the dialogue that characters uh, telling other characters things that they need to know and catching them up. And then also kind of reminding the audience. And it was here in this scene a lot with Tyrion and Danny talking about things. It was there with, uh, like down to hot pie telling Arya about what's going on in the North. This was basically people learning things like Ravens were flying so fast in this episode they must have just invested a ton in the raven network because like danny sends a raven to john and then the next scene is cersei talking about like danny i just feel everyone was knowing everything real fast and i didn't mind it it just contributed to the crazy what i felt pace of this episode i think part of the reason the pace feels faster now is we don't have to check in with as many uh separate characters and separate plots because everything's so converged now so we can literally just rotate through like about three, maybe four different plots, and it just feels so fast. I mean, yeah. everything is moving really fast. Yeah, but I'm think. glad that things are more focused now. Mm-hmm. I, Me I, too. I mean, we did we did get our little break with Miss Andy and Grey Worm. That was good. It ended up being really good. I, when when the scene started, I was like, oh, oh great, these guys. Grown. And then by the end of it, we were all like, oh, all right. Yeah. That was the sexiest them. scene yeah, the show has very, ever done. It was nice. Hot. It was nice to have two characters have a nice, like, loving, really healthy yeah. relationship yeah. Yeah. with each other. I really and loved Grey Worm's, like, speed, uh, like uh, monologue about how she was yeah. his weakness. Cause, and I loved how, like, you know, she hears it at first and she's offended and then he explains it and she understands and just, uh, it was good. And it, it was, plays yeah. to Game of Thrones' theme of love being the death of duty, but here it's not so bad. Maybe yeah. one Maybe of them, it's okay. one or both of them, is so dead so soon. Like. Yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it's too good to last. She's probably Grey Worm, right? Probably. Yeah, yeah. I mean, his, yeah. his uh, occupation kind of has its inherent risks. I like versus how versus hers. I like how Lucy's hiding among the direwolves. Uh, <laughs> oh, coming over. Yeah, I mean, when that when that started, that scene started, I was definitely like, eh, but they won me over. Definitely. They definitely won me over. Yeah. Yeah. We saw it was very good. girl butt and boy butt. Mm-hmm. I appreciated yeah. that. Uh, girl boobs and boy boobs. Although well, sure. that's not the that's same. Not that's not the but same it's at all. Cool. Did you guys want to see his Ken doll? No. I, I, kind of. I, I, yeah. I kind of wanted to see it. Gonna, I was curious. I was curious. Yeah. But then when they, uh, like, the way they were shooting it, I was like, are they gonna? And then when they didn't, I was like, yeah, that, I that's guess. That's probably so. the right No, choice. yeah. That, that scene didn't. Plus, that. it would have been. <laughs> it would have been weird. It also would have been more expensive. <laughs> oh, just sure. had to pay CG. for. Yeah, it something. was very. That scene was very kind to him in the way they shot it, and I, even and it went longer. It wasn't sort of just the fact of them making love and that it will have happened. 
in terms of when you cut away. But, you know, she went to bed. He followed her. It was very loving. And then we did. And the transitions were oh, fantastic. Oh this episode God. was superbly edited. Yeah, so I want to know if there's a new editor on board for the season or if the uh, editors have been there all along and just, like, decided this season to have more fun with it. Because, I mean, obviously last season he had the fucking Old Town uh, Pink Floyd's money montage. Last episode. Last episode, I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, and then this season, well, this was this was Mark cuts. Mylod who directed this episode. Didn't he do the Aria falls down the stairs sequence? He did. Yes. Okay. So oh. there's a couple of possibilities here, I think, and this is purely sp- speculation on my part. Either new editor, or he was really trying to make up for that terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I think that has to be a bigger part of it because I don't think that they're not aware of. Oh, yeah, reception to their episodes. And I think he thankfully decided to like take the criticism and learn from it. And I guess, to be fair, the editor wouldn't be the one deciding that that's how that was going to happen. The director would have storyboarded out those shots. Yeah. So, yeah, never mind. And what we're talking about are two shots from Miss Andy and Grey Worm to Sam, sort of like a hand clutching like a bedpost, but he's really pulling a book. And then Sam to hot pie going from gross grayscale oh, that sequence that to like a pie scene. guys i uh, for one i want to say that the gressels uh james here and his lovely wife erica were cheering that scene on as into sam was it. pulling I the festering scale i loved it what so. what? As- what how is this coming like yeah, like where is watch this? Watch the fly. Fan? Watch Hellraiser. Dude. No, I don't oh, want to watch. The fly is. It, you like, like that? Cronenberg. Do you like, yeah. The, no. Did you like that Cronenberg. scene? Because the fly is like two hours of that. But that's the problem. I don't want to watch two hours of that. I want to watch Goldblum. like a story that's been building for seven years to get to this point yeah. of that. Yes, and like, I also like. I want to see Sam be successful at. I know. At maestering. I'm going to be very upset if this turns into like, oops, (laughs) Sam makes Grayscale super contagious now, like even more contagious than it is. And like he creates uber Grayscale, which I don't think is going to happen. I want, I just want this hero moment. For but like curing Grayscale is a big fucking deal. I he killed a White Walker. That's true. You know, like is Sam. It's also like, it's, it's. He's the George Avatar, so like he probably mm-hmm. is. Know how to cure, great. Yeah, like. I uh, did. You guys notice? Uh, I I was so scared they were gonna go super meta with it. I'm glad they no, didn't. No, Joel, keep it up. I think the. Make up your mind. <laughs> <laughs> are we loud? Are we quiet? We have a very narrow needle to thread, so we're gonna do our best. Did. So that scene where the maester, the Jim Broadbent maester, who's not Marwin, I don't know if it's your name, but <laughs> he was like, he was like, oh, I'm the history of the wars after Robert's rebellion, blah blah blah, and it was like a long title, and Sam gives him a look. He's like, well, what should it, should it be called? And Sam says something like, I, what does he say? He's he like, says more, something more poetic. Yeah. yeah, Song of Ice and Fire. Yeah, or War of the Five Kings. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking one or the other, I but was like, like no don't one's say gonna. The thing. Don't say, and they didn't, but I think the oh, implication. Oh, that would have been awful. Where, would, where, where, where would Ice Sam have gotten but Song I, of Ice and Fire, though? I don't know, but I think it me. was kind of like a... Wait, because, yeah, he's the George surrogate, so he I thought that that was surrogate. kind of a, a funny little moment. I'm going to move away from my mic to breathe. Can um, take Chelsea's down a little and bit? <laughs> Next time, we'll just reconfigure oh, it where the thing is on my side. One, one, okay. Which one are you? Your number Chelsea's, Chelsea's four. number four. Um, yeah. Just sit farther away too. Right. Uh, okay. So what? What's next? What was after? I want to oh, try I and mean, stay kind of in order because we'll no, forget. we've been jumping yeah, around we've been a little jumping bit. Jumping around. Yeah. I mean, we're talking about grayscale. How you yeah. guys feel about all that stuff? Because oh god, that se- the way that sequence was shot too. Get good job, Mark. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Mark way to way to come one. back. Because that like was real was, wide angle close ups and mm. there were a lot of really good. It was a very well made episode. Obviously, the fight scene at the end was fantastic. But like oh god. This so really made up for last year's. Was that the worst episode of the season? Probably, right? Which was it? No one. Yeah, no, no one was probably the yeah. worst episode of the season. Yeah. That or the premiere. I don't know. Premiere was bad. Those too. first two were rough, and that got better. But we're starting off strong this season. Yeah, yeah. definitely, definitely uh, 
really hitting the gas pedal and not letting up. So uh, as far as the grayscale goes and that uh, the Archmaster, when he was like, I'll give you one more day to do what you want to do, do, was he implying kill yourself? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I thought he was implying, you c- you know, we'll kill you tomorrow, but as a knight, like, maybe you could go. No. No, no, no. no. no they, were I... saying, they were saying we will send you away tomorrow to Valyria, but... but- Got it. I'll give Here's you one more sword. day. Wink, wink. Look at the sword. Cut to the sword. Mm-hmm. Have the sword there in the foreground of the next shot. That sword. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, and yeah, it was definitely like, well, you could kill yourself. And I really, I really liked uh, Sam's motivation for helping Jorah when he finds out that Jorah is Gior's son. What oh, you, yeah. what did you guys think of that? Well, I think it's. Like that's that's great. That just goes. It, it's just uh, I don't know. It's one of the things that makes the series what it is. These characters having histories and backstories and knowing each other and knowing their family members and like being affected by that. In the books, it's a little there. It is. Uh, in the books, it's a little <laughs> bit more explicit. Like we haven't seen this scene or any kind of reunion. But uh, when Gior dies, he tells Sam to like let his son know that he forgave him. So when this reunion eventually happens in whatever form it does, Sam will be able to tell Jorah, hey, uh, your dad loved you, which yeah. will be a really I'll powerful cry. moment. But <laughs> Sam uh, remembers. Not having had that oh. set up in the show, I, I, I think it was... Uh, <laughs> Down go the Funko Pops. Oh, yeah, we have we have exclusive Comic-Con oh. Funko Pops from Game right, of Thrones. Buddy, come on. I don't want you turning the sound board off on accident. <laughs> we got a little Conan White Walker. And, is uh, that Conan? This is Conan. Oh wow! Yeah. They had a bunch of different Conans, like Superman, Conan, and like I don't know, maybe a Walking Dead one. Um, I don't know. The Night King. Night King. Yeah. Okay. Night, Night King. <laughs> cool Funkos. Yeah, Funkos. Yeah. They all kind of look the same. It's cool. Uh, <laughs> uh, James, I also like that. Um, it's another showing another example of Sam's frustration with the Maesters approach of t- almost total inaction and i think he wants to do good while he's here that's why he came here in the first place and i think this is an a way he can take clear action as is his bird to uh or his raven to john letting him know about the dragon glass that's a really interesting point action versus inaction i was literally about to make that point it's like olena's uh, point to Danny, mm. like be a dragon. Like everyone in this episode had moments where they were choosing to be super proactive. Uh, and I think. You're on definitely was. Yeah, you're yes, on it. Oh gosh. <laughs> 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 yep. <coughs> John uh, deciding to leave the North to Sansa was that kind of moment too. Yeah. Um, I was expecting him in that moment. I was kind of hoping he would as a big Sansa fan. Which, if you're not a Sansa fan now... Yeah, come on. Come on. But uh, I was expecting... Not really expecting, hoping, I guess, as a fan, uh, that John would abdicate and name Sansa queen. But then but then, if he goes and meets with Daenerys, she's going to be like, why do you matter now? Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, voice? they got there eventually. That's what That was his point, and that makes sense. Yeah. That was just a fanboy moment of me of <laughs> wanting Sansa in her rightful place. Things are going to get really complicated when Bran gets there. Yeah, I yep. thought that yeah. would happen this episode. Me Bran too. Show up, but Bran's I guess gonna... really going to throw a wrench into everything. Although I know Sansa would, like... Sansa would. I think the Stark, t- the Stark kids will all agree. Bran's the heir to the North. I think everyone else around them is gonna fuck shit up. But also, I don't think Bran wants. Bran like, doesn't want. Bran's, Bran's like Bran's, Bran's, Bran's like, like, like mentally and... transcended yes, beyond yeah. like John, the idea yeah, yeah. of heirs to anything yeah, because Bran, he's Bran would abdicate. Yeah. He basically yeah. exists beyond time, and like <laughs> I don't know why he would want to be king in the North. Uh, but yeah, he's like that's cute. Yeah, he's it, like oh that's, yeah. It does make sense narratively that um that John would not be present at Winterfell when his true parentage is made known. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so I guess that makes sense why Bran uh, didn't get there this episode. And it leaves time for Arya to be there when that's revealed as well. Um, Br- yeah, Bran was not in this episode, to clarify. Yeah. Someone asked. I think I we had a like lot of movement of like ravens and ships getting places fast, but you can't lug Bran that fast. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> God damn it. 
Yeah. Was that? Did you say brand fast? Was that a pun? Were you trying to make a? No, I wasn't. I don't think so. I said no. You can't lug him that fast. Okay. Well, no, you know Joel. Maybe that's true. Oh wait, if you if you want one, I can give you one. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, are you again? Okay. Regarding Grey Worm and Missandei, she'll sure Missandei him mm. when he's gone. She'll miss him when he's dead, probably. Yeah. Try, uh, I expect better later, all right? Yeah. We got a little bit to We'll go. come back to you. I just believe in you more, Joel, than I. Um, yeah. We only watched it once. Can we talk about Littlefinger and John and the Yeah, she yeah. can. <laughs> I have feelings about that scene. Oh, and it was me good. too. Yeah, Chelsea noticed the thing that she believed. I was okay. Here's the thing. I want to say here that I noticed it as it happened, and it's gonna show up on Reddit. Someone will like Microsoft paint arrows into the <laughs> scene and point out the cool foreshadowing. But you heard it here first. We'll talk about the scene first, and I'll just okay. Yeah, I'll do my like wacky. End. I'll put on my. So this hat. is okay. Well, well, well actually, we gotta back up. Uh, we can't just jump into that because that comes directly after John. Oh man, there's a lot leading up to that. Should we just start with all the shit that goes on in the north? Yeah, let's yeah, sure. okay, sure, yeah, sure. we kind of skipped over that. Yeah, let's, yeah. Uh, I mean, the very second scene of the episode is John responding to Daenerys's letter and reading uh, what Tyrion wrote him, and Tyrion references the uh, every bastard or every dwarf is a bastard in his father's eyes thing that really made him connect. And that, <gasps> oh, you know, so I love that Tyrion that was like code. Yeah, mm-hmm. for them being like, hey, they were cool. Bro code. And, yeah. and, and again, this this is the, similar to the Sam and uh, Jorah thing. Mm-hmm. Like, this is hearkening back to relationships that we saw in season one. Yeah. And that were brief, but, like, momentous and important. Like, they're, they're scenes that we remember, despite having happened in, like, the first two or three episodes. Tyrion left the wall one. in episode three. Yeah. 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 That was the last time um, he saw or interacted with Jon. But we remember those scenes because they're so good and those characters had such a... A deep connection in that short amount of time. Their relationship is one of my favorite things, especially in the books, because they think about each other a lot. Like they, mm-hmm. you know, they they're very present in each other's storylines in a way that you can't really get on the show because we can't get internal monologues on the show. Yeah, you get the line in the books that I really love, um, where they shake hands at the top of the wall, and I forget whose POV it is, but but they George explicitly points out in the in the inner monologue that like they think of each other as friends. Mm-hmm. And you get that in the show, but I love how I I miss it being made as explicit as it is in the books because you really do. And it it was so nice to see that in the in the show in this episode in in Peter Dinklage's performance when they mention Jon Snow and his eyes kind of light up, and mm-hmm. I think he's genuinely excited that Jon's one still alive, <laughs> and two in this position where they could interact again. Yeah, I think he's genuinely excited to like see, potentially see his friend again, and I'm really excited to see what that reunion is after they've gone through what they've respectively gone through. Uh, John is such a vastly different person. Yeah, and Tyrion's yeah. grown and changed, but not in the same way. Yeah, um, I mean yeah. Tyrion's. Yeah, I wonder if he's going to he's going to believe John when he tells him about the White Walkers, but. I think it's gonna throw a wrench in their plans. Melisandre's there to support whatever cause happens up yeah. north, but oh man, there's so much yeah. to talk to. What were you gonna say? Yeah, Charles. Oh, um, and someone in the chat pointed it out, which kind of nope, don't lay on that. <laughs> Lucy. Lucy, you are so <laughs> she missed but it this us. This is what you get for going to Comic-Con, <laughs> leaving me here. Um. Yeah, a lot of talk about ashes and king of the ashes and queen of the ashes. And it does, yeah, one, it mirrors, uh, who says that about Littlefinger? Varys says, says that. says it about yeah. Littlefinger mm-hmm. that yeah. he would destroy everything if he could be king of the ashes. And there also is the, uh, in season three, two, three, uh, Tyr- or Cersei tells Tyrion that she hopes... Uh, like you will f- I hope you find happiness and someone takes it away from you and your joy will turn to ashes in your mouth mm-hmm. or some so there's just lots of that all over this series and you know even Danny's vision in House of Black and White we have the Iron Throne where it, it looks like it's snowing but I think it's it's ash mm-hmm. um so I think you know think we kind of know where things are eventually gonna so you so you're implying right now that danny is going to be queen of the ashes or some someone will be we we have a sir, oh we vote... yeah okay i know where you're going now oh. I, I think danny will be a villain i think they're building her up to be a, a bad a big wouldn't bad... it be something if she became a villain uh based on 
kind of Elena's prodding. Like Elena helped. Oh, Elena's Lady Macbething her. Yeah. Be a dragon. Yeah. Be, be a dragon. We do see like a flash of that when she dresses down Varys because we haven't really yeah. seen those two jumping. characters talk are, to each other yet. Yeah. All over the it's place. It's so hard to like it is. on one track because all these are so Everything's interconnected so now. Yeah. This is, yeah, it's great that the show is firing on all yeah. these cylinders where we're excited to talk about every single thread. But yeah, that, that scene with Varys was, I mean, it's in the first scene and it, it really grabbed me because again, again, at first I was like, are they just going to be recapping things because she's talking about how you know, Barris's history and who he helped when. But uh, I love that, yeah, she just pressed on Barris, made him explain himself. I think, I, I don't believe that in the books, Varys will yeah. be this noble. And mm -hmm. I'm curious to see. I, think I don't it, know. What? I mean, I think this is going to be, this is a very, uh, you know, Sincere? distilled version of what book Varys is. But I believe that his motivations being driven by the realm is still true to the Varys that we know from the books. It's I just disagree. The, I, Blackfires. Oh, is his motivation God, the yeah, books. damn yeah. it. Yeah. That's, his, that's think, what I was thinking. I was like, are they going to like talk no about... Way. No, but then, the no, show can't do it. So oh, I think the show is going right. to... Like, explain, explain Okay, so briefly, briefly the uh, Blackfire, Blackfire Rebellion was like a, uh, another branch of Targaryens. That should be the spinoff. Uh, oh, that'd be that cool. That would be cool. Uh, that like has warred with Targaryens... And it's a bastard branch. Bas yeah, and basically there's it is, yeah. And there's a theory, a pretty well supported in my opinion theory that Varys is a Blackfire. He is a he's offshoot. A, he's a Targaryen bastard pretty much. Yeah. And so he and uh Illyrio. Illyrio are plotting to restore a Blackfire to the throne. Um That's a, that's a big him. deep that's, book yeah, and that, yeah. Was a, that wasn't the best explanation of but it. But I thought for a second, I was like, is he going to come out and say he's yeah. like part I think target? The show, but no. I think the show is going to do away with that for simplicity's sake and just take what I believe uh, will eventually be Varys's like uh, ulterior motive in the books, just remove it and have show Varys be the sincere for the people guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Which... I guess it's fine with me. I like thinking that Varys has maybe some sin like sinister edge to him, but I love him so much that... I mean, it does go back to season one with his conversation with Ned in the dungeons where he says, where, you know, Ned asks, who do you serve? And he says, the realm. Like, like this mm -hmm. is this is consistent, at least. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So... Um. It, it is, uh, or sorry, go ahead. Oh, that conversation with Danny too. As long as we're still talking about like Targs and Daenerys, uh, Danny and Olena, I found Olena's kind of prodding of her just very. Um, I think she was thinking of what Marjorie did wrong yeah, that whole time. That. Yeah. yeah, and mm -hmm. and just more explicitly, like I think she understands and accepts why Cersei won because Cersei, what she was. A, a dragon to put it kind of cheesily in that <laughs> moment she you know like marjorie was a very good player of the game um but she isn't impulsive the way that cersei she is she wasn't feared she wasn't yeah she yeah marjorie was not feared and marjorie and like elena said you can't fall victim to listening to what men around you tell you to do and marjorie a big part of her game and her plan was to listen to the faith and play along with the and faith Tommen. and Tommen and really? like get on their she good, get in their the good graces. The she was the game. long exactly. con by listening to all the men around her, and it's what did her in in the end. Yeah, you can't beat Cersei at that short game. She's real good in the short, not mm. great in the long. But I, right now, short's doing just fine. I th I think that's true. I I think that there's definitely that side of Olena learning from Marjorie's mistakes, and I'm sure that. Part, you know, Olena maybe is, you know, seeing a little bit of Marjorie in, in Daenerys, mm -hmm. these young, you know, successful, beautiful young women. However, we also have to go back to Olena's point in last season where she's talking about how I have no house left. I, I have mm -hmm. no children. I have no heirs. I am an old woman with nothing to lose. Olena's motivation is revenge urging Danny to burn King's Landing and ki kills Cersei. Olena mm -hmm. is satisfied. End of Olena's yeah. point. She's old. Who could kill? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think I that there was a lot in this episode um, that I feel like was influenced by, by that there, there's there. I mean, this is, it's just, it's, it's hard not to read things this way, but like 
there's a lot in this episode reading into it through kind of a lens of of current events a little bit. I think that Jamie's oh, yeah. conversation with Randall Tarley is fear mongering uh, f- on foreigners. I would love to to say that like this episode one it, it reminds me of season one in how focused it is and how political it is. Yes, we see a oh lot gosh, of yes. fucking campaigning. And this in is this when episode. Game of Thrones is at its best. Yep, is when it's just good dialogue. People. It's people just talking. It's and actors doing their thing. Great and I love it. Maybe it's just because we went through an election that I was like super into for months on end. And uh, maybe th- like that influenced their writing, or maybe it's just influencing how I'm reading it. But like we just saw a whole bunch of campaigns, and they're like wedge issues that they're bringing up. Cersei uh, referring to slave masters as noblemen instead of like mm-hmm. spin, the, the, yeah, the spin. spin. Oh, and yeah. then like really using that Alternative foreigners facts. as a dro- as a wedge issue. It's hard not to to think that this is and and somehow. Tyrion brings it up in in their discussions as well. He he says that we won't win Westeros by using an army of foreigners, and it's he knows that Cersei is going to play up that that fear. I mean, the whole Dothraki for the on the shores of Westeros for the first time ever, um, where now they're playing up the Dothraki as this horrible thing to be feared, where back in season one, mm-hmm. the Dothraki were never an issue. Mm-hmm. They, they, they were like, well, if they do come here, whatever, we'll kick their ass because we have armor. Yeah. You know, like, and now there's it's something that they're concerned about. And I think it's just political spin to win the 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 reach lords to her yeah. cause. Absolutely. Like I wrote down spin and circled <laughs> it. Like like what Jamie is doing talking to uh Randall Tarley is just loads of spin. Like, well, you know, the Targaryens are crazy. Here's another crazy Targaryen. And oh yeah, Elena was a once great woman, but she's not anymore. She's too old. Mm-hmm. She's losing her edge. So I'm I, I was loving it. It felt very modern. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. And uh, even John has his own like campaign promise. Like this might not seem cool, but uh, undead army is ele- you elected me to save you from the undead army. Mm-hmm. And you keep talking a lot about this undead army, but we've never seen an undead <laughs> army. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the global warming of Westeros, mm-hmm. kind of. Well, yeah. I mean that you know that's obviously a big part of the series as a whole, and. Mm-hmm. Oh, um, and we. Oh, sorry. No. Do we? Uh, we all. Oh, sorry. Uh, we uh, we also <laughs> get, uh, you know, a, a plan to take care of dragons in the form of we're working on it. We've got a secret plan, but turns out Kybern does have a plan. Oh, yeah. The, oh the yeah. yeah. You remember crossbow. crossbows? <laughs> it's that, but bigger. Yo, I know your son got off on crossbows. So, so. here you go. My favorite was like cut to Kyburn, like, yes, we're working on something. <laughs> Giant Kyburn boner. I, I was very disappointed that the solution ended up being a ballista. Like, if they, yeah. if they have catapults, cool. they've well, had that. And they've, they've used all the wildfire. In theory. In theory. But like a wildfire also potentially wouldn't may might That's not true. hurt. That's true. It might, a dragon. Yeah. It, might not, it might make things a lot worse, actually. Yeah. You know, I could see that being an interesting like if, if dragons make their way to King's Landing and Cersei figures like we still have wildfire, it's our secret weapon again. And we'll <laughs> use it against dragons, but basically it just is like gasoline for dragons <laughs> and just makes everything makes worse. Makes them bigger. Uh-huh. <laughs> um Someone saying something that's just oh the crossbow's disappointing. Yeah, crossbow's yeah. disappointing. It was and very I, disappointing. I want a horn. And I, I want agree a the skeleton he dragon. Skeleton dragons for <laughs> a second. Dragon. He like reanimated yeah. the skeletons. I the- uh, I agree with some people in the chat that the scientist in me uh, like cringed when they shot that s- dragon I skull. Know, I yeah, know. pierced it with the this bow. like priceless artifact. <laughs> yeah. I don't. Like, oh no. But Science. that's that's the thing though is like. It you know, Cersei, Cersei mentioned like, oh, Robert moved them down here because they were his trophies. Cersei doesn't give a yeah. fuck about preservation of history. She'd be the type of ruler she, where she would go, she would burn the library of Alexandria. Just oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, she doesn't, you know, that's not her bag. She doesn't care about preserving information for future generations. No like, way. it's target practice. Fine. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Where else are you going to get a dragon skull to k- test your ballista? Yeah, exactly. It's like it's for the the good of uh, Cersei. I was going to say the realm. No, it's for the good of Cersei. Oh God, guys! It, is the library is the citadel going to burn? 
Mm. No. Oh, there's so much fire and there's so many books. I I'm know. Just, I'm just worried now. That would go up fast. So what do we, what do you guys think about the end game? Just, uh, there's so many things. Um, but with Sam trying to cure Jorah, is it going to not work? Because it seems like he was just picking off scabs. I I, I think there's going to be a side effect he doesn't foresee. There's yeah, no there's, there's no way that it's just like Jorah's Jorah fine dragon. now. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh my That's god. How you make one. <gasps> Guys, what if Jorah's niece What if Nisa. Jorah becomes a dragon and then he's like Khaleesi? <laughs> Love me ride now. Me. Ride me Khaleesi. <laughs> Khaleesi. Will you ride me now, Khaleesi? <laughs> yeah. Anyway. No, I I think uh I think he, there's going to be some sort of magical side effect that is going to make him some court, sort of like magic cyborg, like yeah. Mega Man. Cool. Did you see that people were uh, freeze framing and zooming in on something that the Archmaester was reading that maybe suggested that a possible uh, cure for Grayscale was consuming dragon glass? Oh, oh, interesting. That makes sense. Because it'd be in the air on Dragonstone. Exactly. Wouldn't, wouldn't that so, yeah, that would have made sense that, you know, that Maester was able, or Maester Crescent was yeah. able to cure Shireen is because, like, the cure's right there. Yeah. And, like, it would explain how the Stone Men were able to, like, survive on Valyria because there presumably would be dragon glass in Valyria. Oh. You I know. thought they were just zombie Stone Men. Well, yeah, they're zombie Stone yeah. Men, but, like... The reason why they didn't die. Yeah. Hmm. I wonder. You know, they seem to know. be somewhat organized when they attacked that ship. You know, like that, <laughs> they're not just like mad, like you know, raving oh, yeah, madmen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like they had some sort of organization, <laughs> some sort of society. Ash, dragon cartilage. <laughs> oh my god, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> um, um. Oh wait. Someone was saying uh, something, Joel. Yeah, there was something. I was gonna make a joke about the Archmaster's apprentice. It wasn't that though, but there you go. Um, <laughs> good work. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh, uh, dragon glass is weird. You put it in someone like as a blade, and they become a White Walker. What? Well, no, but that's that's, that's, that's with like that's a, like that's in like conjunction with magic. like old okay. old magic. Yeah, yeah, the I, yeah. I thought it was just. I that. also believe. I saw somewhere uh, somewhere online say like the children of the forest are now officially extinct. Uh, I, yeah, I'm not sure. Is be. that true? Oh, it's suggested. It's suggested. It's, so I, mean, I on the show I, for simplicity's sake, I think so. Probably. So I think maybe a, a side effect of that is like no more White Walkers like that. You know, like they knew how to do it. They and really fucked it up for everyone, huh? Oh, for sure. That's yeah. nuclear weapons. Yeah. Idiots. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Stupid ass children of the forest, grow the fuck up. Be adults of the forest. <laughs> Get wiped out by an invading force of technologically advanced people. <laughs> <laughs> Just let oh, it happen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, oh, hey, guys. They, <laughs> they recast Dickon. They, they did. Dickon! A shout out. It was a, oh, who are you? Oh, I'm Dickon. I'm yeah. Dickon. <laughs> I'm Dickon. I have always been Dickon. <laughs> <laughs> the show just really wanted to go with a bigger Dickon. Uh, no, he's a bigger dick. He's taller. He's a much bigger dick. Both Dickens extremely handsome. Yeah. Both old Dickens. I don't know why Dickens? they recast. Yeah, oh, you know like, what? Hashtag what not my dick. It's because that Dickens. dude went on to a different show. I On guess, real? but like, but I it think it was. Oh God, no! He was doing that. No, he was doing fucking else. time travel TV version of the <gasps> Jack the Ripper. <gasps> oh, he was yeah. doing that shit. Oh, was it worth it? You're canceled. You know oh. what? If someone offered me a role on a Jack the Ripper show, I'd do it. If someone offered <laughs> me a role as a uh, series regular versus a yeah, like a, a bit guest part. star, yeah, yeah, I would yeah. take but it. So Chelsea, you said it wouldn't have taken that much time. Maybe it will in the future. What? I mean, Dickens, ah. Dickens' part. Maybe he'll have a bigger part. Obviously, Randall's about to have a bigger part this season. I think. Rand Randall's just gonna be fodder for Field of Fire Part Two. That's all he is. Sure. Yeah. Oh, right. it's, well, we got to kill somebody, and we can't kill Jamie. Well, he was important this episode, kind of. Yeah. It, yeah. Does he want his sword back? He's got to know. Oh, yeah. Going. Oh, he he didn't wants mention that. Yeah. Where? It, I guess uh, it's just in uh, that apartment. Uh, yeah, it's in the apartment. They're with in like Sam. their studio their apartment. Yeah. <laughs> in Old Town. Um, oh, go ahead. Uh, I I do like that. That scene made me think about federalism because Cersei was like, "Hey, Tarly and other lords of the Reach, you owe your loyalty to me," mm. and he's like. No, I owe my loyalty to Highgarden, and it's like states', states rights. rights. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like, I yeah. Interesting. Whose who's, mm -hmm. uh, pledge 
-hmm. supersedes the others, you know? Randall would be a super libertarian. Mm. Oh, for he's sure. He's all about like survival of the fittest. He's got a bunker full of weapons. For sure. <laughs> and food. For sure. Yeah. Uh, uh, no, I don't mean feudalism. I mean federalism. Like uh, layers of government like we have in the United States with a national government and states I mean, having some measure of autonomy. Right. I mean, there's it, the corollary to feudalism as well. but No, was, I mean, feudalism it, is... Well, there's, it's I mean, a, it is, so Westeros noble. is feudalism. Yeah, yeah it is. But, you know, I, that, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, I yeah, see yeah. what you mean. Yeah, yeah. No, I think, um, that, I think that that's definitely something to, it's a way of looking at it, but, you know, I agree, James. Yeah. Thanks. Um, quick quick tidbit, interesting book to show Give stuff. Bits. I thought it was interesting that they haven't named Broadbent as Marwyn yet, but they were comfortable to just use up Pylos. So, Crescent was the maester on Dragonstone. He tried to poison Melisandre. He died because he failed at it. And then Pylos is the one that replaces him. And in this version... Oh, in the books, yeah. Yeah, in the show, Pylos, I guess, is the guy who wrote the book wrote on book. how oh. to cure mm. dragons. Catch good that. catch. Yeah, good catch. Good catch. Yeah, man. Um, I forgot to bring my computer charger. And we're starting to run out of battery. Oh. Uh -oh. oh, we so still have 24%. We'll, we'll be Do you have a Mac charger, don't you? Uh, is it the new one? No, I have it's that. not the new yeah, one. Yeah, it's not the USB-C. No, it's not so that let's, one. Let's continue on. I don't need that then. one. Well, I have an older computer. I don't. USB C is not what I want. I know, and so I'm saying we don't have. Oh, a you got the. New, oh, you have a new app. one. Yeah, oh, yeah, boo! Yeah. Well. Uh, oh, can I point out my my little Winterfell thing? Yes. Oh, yes. We yeah. just like yeah. It, the, the well, oh, oh wait, we still so, didn't. so leading up to that. <laughs> I know because we were at Winterfell. And I know. We here, I'll, oh, I'll jump back right before place. that scene. Uh, John does announce his decision to go see Daenerys after getting the letter from Sam about there being a bunch of dragons. Oh, he and, and and he talked with Sansa, and they disagreed, and he then turns to her saying, like, this is what I'm doing. Yeah, why didn't he have a second small council meeting after oh he got that God, letter from John. Sam? Was it just to have the, was it just for writing reasons, like, oh, and now conflict? Like, what, I think what that's would prevent him from just, like, get, reading that letter, and instead of calling everyone together to be like, I'm doing this, why not call that same small council together and be like, guys, things have changed. I got this Because you know letter. they shot that shit the same day as that other scene from last week. Yeah. 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 Let's it's be 100%. real. They paid those actors same for day. two days. Yeah, they had all <laughs> oh. those extras. Well, yeah. what's interesting to me I is mean, that Bronzion is there. Where's Robin right now? I was thinking that too. Where's no, he Robin? probably can't make that. Hashtag, where's Robin? He's, he's, in the the he's, he's playing with his falcon. Yeah, he's in, uh, he's it was in my the ears well. still. Oh, yeah, he's got his new pet. Yeah. That little finger gave him. Yeah. Um... Bronzion, cool. I love yeah, Bronzion. Yeah, cool. Still cool. Still cool. Cool, cool, cool. Is, uh, is Littlefinger just... Is he worse at scheming right now? Because I kind of feel like he's just bad he's, at scheming. He's just sitting there I smirking. I think he, he feels he, the same way we do, where everything is moving very fast all of a sudden. <laughs> and he's like, ooh, because he, his strength is planning like so many steps ahead of everyone else, but I think so much stuff is happening without him. No, his his strength is like playing on the chaos. Like making I chaos know, and but then he adapting. Yeah. I think he's But he's, he's good too at setting up dominoes now. too. Mm -hmm. And he yeah, I think now he's he's getting like sidetracked by Sansa. Yeah. yeah. Sansa. Who he loves as he loved Captain. Yeah, weirdo. Yeah. Which causes John to grab him. Okay, so John yeah, throws a little finger up against the wall, chokes him <laughs> out, and is like, oh, God, what? Hold on. No, nothing. I thought okay. that your sentence was going to end differently. Okay. Uh, <laughs> he chokes him and says, if you talk, did he say, if you talk to my sister? If you, you talk, talk to, to my sister, sister I'll kill you myself. Uh, again, this is the thing where I'm like, if you see it on Reddit, I saw it first, because I just think it's cool. So uh, John leaves, and there's a shot of Littlefinger right in front of Ned's uh, crypt and Ned holding a stand-in basically for ice. Uh, ice doesn't exist anymore. Um, <laughs> ice exists in the form of Oathkeeper, which is Brienne's sword, and Widow's Whale, which who has that? Jamie, Jamie, show, has, Jamie it, has it. Which was Joffrey's sword. Um, but yeah, Jamie has it now. Um, then there's a cut to John leaving the crypts oh, and a touch. Sorry. It's if he touch. Touch. Okay. Says, sorry. Yeah. Um, My bad. There is a fan theory and i think this is very valid i think this is how it's going to go down because there's a lot of subtext for it in the books a lot of foreshadowing a lot of people think that um sansa will kill littlefinger and he will be beheaded because there's a lot of 
symbolism throughout the books that implies that that will happen. Um, so as we see John leaving the crypts right after he says, if you touch my sister, I will kill you. He walks right past the statue with no head on it. Like yeah. right after we see little finger next to Ned holding ice, quote unquote, not really. Um, and another part of that theory is that uh, he will be beheaded with one of these swords that contains the remnants of ice in it. Probably Oathkeeper because Brienne has it in the show, mm. in the show. Yeah. Anyway, you yes. heard it here I, first. It's I, totally going down. I prefer, I think I think there's a lot of credence to that. I prefer Littlefinger being killed by the cat's paw dagger. Okay. Oh, yeah. I think that there's a great poetic justice in that action. Um, because that was the kind of MacGuffin that started so much. And if it happens in Winterfell, that's so fitting. Yeah. I agree. I agree. Um, I think that there's... There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of cool symbolism there and and a and a poetic justice to it uh, that I re- I really enjoy. Although I would love for him to be beheaded by the remnants of ice as well. I, I mean, love th- it so much because th- 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 it's it's justice. I mean, that was that was the the first scene with Ned in the, the show. And do we know where the dagger? We had is this right discussion now? last week. Has it. He has it. Okay. Yeah. We ha- yeah, we talked about this last week. Yeah, Littlefinger oh, has bad, it. Sorry. It came up, though, that Arya has it, but I In think it was just for images. a shoe. Yeah, I don't think that's... Yeah. Oh. Uh, so some people are complaining about the whole uh, Valerian word for oh, prince. Oh, can, can I talk mean, about that? Uh, yeah, I will say that that's been a theory for a long time. That's, a, that's been a theory for like, a that's while. Not, I, this, uh, the dialogue was a little clunky, yeah, I feel, but... This isn't the show deciding to rewrite itself and make itself PC feminine. Like it's yeah, not, like, this has been a thing in the books for years and years and years that that word for the prince that was promised is gender neutral and yeah. Valerian. And what this does is this opens up that prophecy to so many other characters. And a big thing with prophecy is that they often fulfill themselves in really unexpected ways. So the idea of making that word gender neutral I yeah. think lends itself to making that prophecy fulfill itself in a way that's a lot more interesting than oh it's it's j- just John or it's like an, a character that's very obvious. Yeah, yeah um, and, uh, and I I'm I have I get irked by the idea that choices like that are for reasons that are like propaganda or just to like prove a point. Like it's not. It's it's yeah. good writing. It's you plug that in. Right you know, it adds Thank another you. layer of depth. To though to that theory and to that plot line and opens up a lot more options that are interesting. She was like the fifth character introduced on the show. Like she's yeah, also she's the yeah, main like character. she's the she's like a main character. Obviously, she's part of the end game. To to claim that this is the show trying to course correct and be feminist or something is is ludicrous. It's yeah. absurd. Yeah, if it's, you, it's a it gross a misreading years and years and if, of the text. If you if you're a fan of the show and more specifically the books because the books are better at it. Yeah. The the books have really amazing female characters. Period, and is written very well in terms of female viewpoints. It's always. Been, it's been like that since the 90s. Yeah. This isn't HBO or the writers of the show deciding to make a point all of a sudden. That's what this series is. Yeah. House, like, House of the Undying was in Clash in 1998 or something. Yeah. Like, it's not PC bullshit. It's not P. Yeah. I'm, it's not. No. Yeah. It's not PC bullshit. If you think it's PC bullshit, you have a severe misunderstanding of what this series is trying to do. Um, yeah. Like, that's. How yeah. I feel yep. about that. Yeah. And someone else made a point that dragons don't have genders, so that would make sense that oh, there would be some like cool. pronoun issues with uh, that language. There's a lot of pluralism in the whole Targaryen mythos as well. The dragon has three heads. There was this the brother and two sisters of the original conquering Targaryens. There's a lot of that whole thing. There's you know there's a lot of of pluralism going on in what the the whole prophecies surrounding the targaryens and stuff so go read the books <laughs> read other books read books and bar- broaden your horizons <laughs> uh people are asking if valencar is also gender neutral that's book stuff that's not on that's the show not even that yeah, that wasn't even part of the prophecy oh, in yeah, the show yeah, unfortunately yeah. um i think specifically valencar is 
is gender. It's because it's like a specifically gendered word, I think. So it, it translates to little. Br- I'm not sure. Like I. Oh, but yeah, I have heard theories that like it could be little sister, little sibling, it could be, uh, Aria, yeah. like Danny, something yeah. like that. That's the crazy thing about these books. Is that everything's Again, been theorized. prophecy. That's why crazy. prophecy can. You know, it's always been like this, where prophecy can fulfill itself in like weird ways that you're not expecting. It was cool. I mean, it was something that D and D mentioned in their little after show uh, debriefing. Uh, I I did note during that scene that it's like wow a bunch of women standing around planning yeah. especially uh, I I noticed it especially because Fionn uh, was silent in the background mm-hmm. good and yeah as opposed to like you know that moment in the last season or two seasons ago when he had to like fill in Sansa on the words that she Ugh. uh yeah when she was pledging her oath to Brienne to Brienne mm-hmm. yeah but um. Yeah, it was it was cool to see that scene and all these women kicking ass with all their various viewpoints. Uh, does that lead? Uh, is there uh, anything and else and to talk about? Arya. Let's, let's yeah, let's let's do Arya and Nymeria real oh, quick. Okay. Right. And hot no, pie. Yeah, mm. I was just gonna say that I like the idea of yeah, we have this scene with a bunch of women deliberating their, their deliberating politics, which is unfortunately a rare scene to see in anything. Mm. But I love the idea even more that this could potentially lead to Danny being a villain because again something I like about this series is that when I think of the idea of strong female character I don't think of someone who is like they're strong and great and they're the best which I think Mm -hmm. maybe a lot of people have this idea that Danny is but I don't think she is at all I she's she's a very flawed character she's gonna turn she's gonna turn and I love the idea of like given giving these female characters just another layer of like maybe they fuck it all up and that's fine because it's interesting yeah, you know it's fine if if this leads to her becoming a villain because I think that's an interesting thing to do with these characters. I think it's less interesting if like you just have a bunch of that you turn them into stock characters where they all come in and they're strong female women and they kick ass and they saved the day. You know, well, give I w- them some depth, make it gray. I love the idea of this leading to her you know, her turn. What do you see as a motivation for that turn? Well, she we does. She does tell it. John to come bend the knee. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know how strongly she's going to want a uh, complete and unbroken uh, kingdom. I know the Northern Lord. I mean, I don't think John particularly cares if uh, the King's Landing has nominal control over the North, but I don't think the Northern Lords no. are going to sit with that. I mean, this goes back to I want to break the wheel and crucify the masters and all this other stuff. She's done brutal things that mm-hmm. she's done in the name of her, you know, her personal viewpoint on her morality and her justice. But it's she, been very brutal. I mean, she also she's very she also entitled. completely destabilized an entire region and, yeah. and yeah. then pieced the fuck out. That's why I'm sure I Dario's doing fine. I do see uh, a lot of a big criticism I see of Danny's character is that she she's a white savior and people always post to that scene where she's being it's like Misa that but that's a big part of her character and why I do hope that she becomes a sort of villain type figure is that she is like the white savior trope. She ends up in becoming a white savior. She doesn't save the day. She, yeah, she destabilizes an entire region of the world because she doesn't know what the fuck she's doing. Yeah. Like she, it's the idea that she, I think, thinks sh- that she's better than these people without explicitly saying it, but it's a very condescending way to come in and think like, I'm doing such a good thing yeah. for these people. For all her... um pros as far as uh just like wanting to free people and be a good person it seems she's still driven i think primarily by this entitlement that she belongs on the iron throne and that like her rightful inheritance is westeros Mm -hmm. and right now she's also in a position where she's like vera said the best bet for the realm if that changes in some way we could see a different side to her because right now she's seen as a solution and she might not be. Another thing I thought of is that right now we're seeing in ways that are very explicit, her quoting Tyrion's own advice. We saw at the end of last season, beginning of this season, if she somehow loses Tyrion, either as an advisor or just Tyrion's gone, then she would not have necessarily in herself the same tempering kinds of instincts. How would she lose Tyrion? I don't know, man. Mm. I mean, displays of madness. She did just lose 
a bunch of people on her side. Should oh, we can we talk? Oh, wait, Arya. We gotta talk about oh, okay, Arya. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And oh, hot yeah. Okay, so there was some confusion about like Arya's like that's not you, and some people maybe thought like well, that wasn't Nymeria. D and D cleared it up in their in um, their post show. Yeah, yeah which that was a fest. useful that was a useful little tidbit. Yeah, fine. It was a callback to a season one episode when uh, Ned told her about how she was gonna marry and do all that, and she says that's not me. So she's recognizing that Nymeria is uh, not. Not a domesticated uh, wolf, and that belong she belongs in the wild. Mm-hmm. I think wow. it's clunky dialogue, though. I think it's clunky dialogue. Well, I understand, it's a callback. I understand the intention of it being a callback, but I think that it's sure. Clunky. I would have okay. liked it was if it was confusing. that's not you. Like, who's the her? Who's she talking to herself? Like, if she would have said that's she not say you, that's not if you. she said that's not her. I no, thought. She, no, said, she says she that's, says not, that's you. not you. That's not oh. you. But, but oh, okay. Well, that's, well, well it's I'm not happy clear what she's referring to there. It's not clear that what she's referring to is yeah. that, oh, it's not you to just come and blindly follow me now. Even though, but but if this is the only time we see Nymeria, it won't be. This is a yeah, waste she, she of Nymeria. Like, don't even bring her back. There's it no. Won't be. Close that thread. Because. If 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 they're setting up this mirror of like Arya's journey and Nymeria's journey, Arya recognizing uh, Nymeria kind of following the similar path that she did, Nymeria's gonna end back up in the north too, you know, like on her own volition. Sure, for some Arya hero hasn't moments. been summoned. Nymeria is not gonna be summoned. You know, like they're both gonna end up in the same place individually i think is what's gonna happen i'd be curious to see if she just finds nymeria and sticks with her in the books and that they just couldn't afford it in the show that 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 could like, also be while you're riding there's around been, on nymeria yeah. sounds there's been great. so much foreshadowing in the books to nymeria's pack playing some kind of role and i'll be really disappointed if we don't see that mm-hmm. but i think if if this is you know time will tell but i'm prejudging seems like a lot of the people in the chat aren't as enthusiastic about this episode as, uh, mm-hmm. as we are. I loved it. I liked it because it was so talky. I will say there yeah. was... No, nope, d- but we are on an island for t- liking talky no, episodes. I like talky mm. everything. Uh, I will I will Except agree with some ending. people that are saying that the dialogue is a little bit uh, clunky in places and just that kind of stood out that's to me. Fair. But yeah. I, I think that that's... Um, uh, primarily in this episode, I think it's a symptom of the speed at which they're going. I agree. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so Nymeria, we see Nymeria. We also see Hot Pie again, oh, who is just a sweetie and gotten so good at baking things. Was anyone else a little bit bothered by Maisie Williams's performance in oh, that scene? In that I was. scene. Oh no, in I like scene. I was. Wait, what? What it did felt you like, like? She was like acting like too cool for school. Oh yeah, like, that's. Oh. I loved that. I like, I don't think it was successful. I don't know. I, yeah, to me, she was, was very tri-hardy. closed off, not mm-hmm. talking with him. There were a lot of like you could tell. After she got the news, she was more in like a. After she got the news, she was great. Well, I know that's the that's the change. Like they even shot I, her like close up when she was being closed up and not really I, looking at like looking away from him, not talking to him. And then when she got the news, brightened up and was more in like not so close on her. I like the change. I like the post change. I didn't like the pre change. I didn't like the way she performed that. Uh, that like. I'm initial. gonna go back to Mark Mylod here. I was literally, I well, was just going to say yeah. that. I think he doesn't and know And I don't think her. him and Maisie Williams are on the same page. Same. Did, didn't, uh, was there? Because she's an excellent actress. Was there like some, uh, something about last year in that episode, Maisie disagreeing with him? Yes. Mm-hmm. Take on things? So yeah. maybe there is like, that. maybe mm. that is a director, actor, uh, just miscommunication. Mm. I believe that 100%. Yeah. So yeah. You, you just didn't like what, they were communicating or the choice overall like no i i think i think the intent was fine yeah but i didn't like the execution yeah Mm -hmm. okay and and i'm gonna lay that at the feet of the director because Maisie williams is a better actress than that Mm. yeah um is it time I th- I yeah, let's do it. It's time, brother. I didn't expect that. Got I, kicked out. And it was I really fantastic. See, here's, here's my love game. Thrones and I love talky episodes because <laughs> then they can throw this shit at you and you're not expecting it. Yeah. And it didn't have I, to be an episode long. That was a tight what, 10 minute fight? Yeah. yeah. I half expected the episode to end when they see the sails coming through the fog because I was like, this episode's got to be almost over. And then that scene started, and I was like, I didn't expect to see Euron this episode. He walks away from Cersei. I'm thinking, oh, in a few episodes, we'll catch up and see what he's doing. No, we see his fucking plan right fucking now. 
It's to deliver her Alaria. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm guessing he'll kill that third sand snake before they ever get to her, or give her to Cersei or to like kill. Or kill, like bring her into the throne and, and then, then kill, kill her. Yeah. 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 Like and Cersei's like, oh my god. And Yara, and you're on fucking Greyjoy, finally lives up to, yeah. all his, to, to all the bridge. Yeah, to, the to the bridge, yeah. yeah. To the Greyjoys, to the yeah. Gray, yeah. <laughs> like, this is why... Uh, people love the Greyjoys. If you're show watcher only, and maybe you've seen uh, <laughs> other fans who are like, they fucking love Greyjoys, and you don't get it, this is why. Because they are just all lunatics, and they're just <laughs> this crazy, like, they're just full throttle always, and they're pirates, and God. Someone's asking, how did he know where they were and sneak past Dragonstone? I don't think he did. weren't weren't They, they were, headed from Dragonstone they to were, the Iron they were Islands. Sailing to, well, they were sailing to Dorne. Yes. And... Yeah. Oh, to uh, to. Yeah, they were, the plan was sail to Dorne, raise the Dornish army, meet up with the Tyrell and army, and then Landing. go to King's Landing. Okay. Yep. Oh, with the ships that they already had. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And they, it makes sense that they would meet up. Did here's a really important question: Did they have the Dornish army with them? When I don't attacked? think no, so. No, no. The Dornish army is in Dorne. The plan was to pick them up from Dorne. Yeah. And but bring how do them. we know that it wasn't after? Well, that. because in that sexy, sexy scene with uh, Alaria and Yara and Theon, she was saying, "Well, when we get to Dorne, it, there's a you. lot okay. of good stuff." I was in distracted Dorne. by the sexiness there. I'm I know. Sorry. I'm sorry. We almost had a <laughs> brother sister Dornish woman threesome. No, they were just fucking with him. Were they? Yeah. Yeah. I don't were think they? Well, I don't know. Yara maybe Alaria uh, wasn't. Yara also knows that he's been castrated. Yeah. 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 They're just I think Alaria was I'm the sure one who was just like, she. it was a power move. Yeah. And she like making him uncomfortable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Uh, so, okay. But yeah, it makes sense that they would run into each other because it, they're literally just heading straight at each other. Yeah. yeah and like, if people, some people last, last week on Reddit were like, um, Sorry, our stream is being funky here. Oh, stream. I mean, I'm Still sure it's just lag. It's fine. probably fine. Um, some people on Reddit last week were complaining about, like, how did they sail past Dragonstone or whatever? It's huge. It's huge. It's a huge space. It's a huge sea. It's a huge island. It's not like it's five miles. Like, it's massive. It's massive. Remember that it's a massive, massive fantasy world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, anyway. That scene was fucking. That's, it was yeah. great. It yeah. was so cool. That guy got crushed. That guy got crushed by yeah. that ramp that you're on road down. Oh, man. Oh, yeah, the foreign invasion line was fucking cheesy. Yeah. Well, yeah. Was, I yeah. think they got, they, I think it was also a little bit reminding everyone why they hated the Sand Snakes. Like, if they're going to kill them off, might as well make them yeah. full, might as well go full Sand Snake. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I think I was, I was saying to the rest of you that uh, after this, they were, the writers had to have been like, we need people to be invested in Euron. Let's just have him kill off everyone's most hated mm -hmm. characters. Mm -hmm. And so he kills two Sand Snakes I in the same I feel so bad for those actresses. Yeah. It's not their fault. Those characters were written so poorly. And they're yeah. so cool in the books. Like, if I was some, if I was an actress and I got cast as a Sand Snake, I'd be so excited. Because they're cool. Like, I like them a lot in the books. And they did them such a disservice. And I'm glad that they... Uh, got to be, you know, they had to have a last moment of being pretty kick-ass in this episode. Like, they hold their own. They, like... Uh, they're I, whipping them. They're stabbing them. Yeah. The one Sand Snake gets cornered by, like, five Iron Islanders and is, like, fends them off for a while. Yeah. Like, yeah, they're kick-ass. And I'm happy that those actresses got to do that and have some decent fight choreography for once yeah. in this entire show. Those poor girls. <sighs> It's okay that that one is now an iron fist, so she got a much better project. Uh, it's not a good project. <laughs> uh, we are experiencing severe lag. It looks like oh, like it looks as though it's uh like really bad, like untenable lag. What is that correct? Sarah says we're fine. I I think that's in. I think a, that's in response to my apology for. The oh lag. yeah. I feel like this tends to happen on streams after they go for a while, but usually not only after an hour. I'm hardwired. I feel it looks like the internet's going out. Curse you, internet. Yeah, I do believe it's a internet sort of situation. Well, we're just going to keep talking and hope for the best because we're almost done. Yeah. 
Okay. Yeah, you guys might be catching up with us later if uh, hopefully this just records properly and you can watch it, this part afterward. Oh, like it'll look if you watch it later, it'll yeah. look. Yeah, yeah. hopefully. <laughs> Fingers I'm, crossed because then it's weird if we just start yeah. been talking to ourselves this whole time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, um, so he, he killed off some people that were characters we didn't really like, except one of them got away. His name is Theon. <laughs> and I really is? love your yeah. your theory, Chelsea, that that's just the last we th- see of Theon. I hope. No. No, it'd no be so he's gonna get great. away and <laughs> live to be more tragic. Fuck Theon. I know, fuck Theon forever. But that's why I think it'd be such a good way for him to go because I think it would be like the most poetic way for him to die is him thinking like, oh god, I can't handle this. I'm, I I gotta save myself. But then, oops, no, you're gonna die like the worst death ever because you're just gonna like starve to death in the ocean and drown. <laughs> that sucks. And it would be fitting if he like drowned. I was ready for him to die right then. He has more to great. do. I know. Like he, it, it sucks. Story yeah. Is, it, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, do you want to address, uh, like, the Sand Snake's weapons were probably poisoned or whatever? I, that No. Mm-hmm. I mean, they probably they were. were I mean, they weren't actively prepped. I don't want to give the Sand Snakes that much credit. The Whoa. show Sand Snakes. Yeah. yeah. God, book Sand Snakes are so much cooler. They were in their little bunks just talking. They didn't expect an attack. Um... So it, yeah. that fight was that fight was great. Let's walk through it. Uh, they stab the ship, and then that awesome ram comes down where yeah, Euron's what? riding it, riding and then it. crushes it, yeah. that crushes shot it, that of him dude. like riding that like down that. It looked like it was from a different thing. Like it looked like it was taken from like a nineties. <laughs> Like I don't know something of I think maybe the combination of his outfit, which again looks like Shakespeare in Love, mm-hmm. like so you yeah, got your mid nineties like leathery fantasy, and then just like the way it's lit, it's like all these reds and like bright color, like everything about it just looked like it was from something else for just that moment, yeah, like a insane. music video or something. <laughs> yeah, love that shit. Fun. I was there for that. <laughs> <laughs> I got so excited for Great Joys. I loved his acts. With like, the, oh, yeah. with like the tentacles on it. Um, yeah. That was a good one. That was so cool. Wearing armor again. Mm hmm. Uh, everything, like, everything about that fight was great. It was brutal. I loved, I loved the shots when Theon started having his breakdown. I loved the shots showing uh, Euron's crew taking trophies. And being like full <gasps> yeah. iron like they're, bolt. They're like yanking out gold teeth. Cutting yeah. ears off. Yeah. Uh-huh. Like, like paying the iron price, like mm-hmm. Iron Islanders being fucking crazy ass pirates. This is the first time Theon probably has ever seen like Iron Islanders being Iron Islanders for real. That's true. Yeah. Well, I don't know because he was 10 or 11 when he left. Yeah. Right? I think he might remember. But would he be like in. Bat, like, yeah, he you know, wouldn't have been. Like, like would he have been watching? Islands? Yeah, maybe. I don't think. I like, don't know. maybe he would have seen people invading, like Pike. Yeah. But they but were on the it. losing end of that. Yeah, too. yeah. this is like a an Iron Islanders victory. I don't think he's ever seen anything. Yeah, maybe quite yeah. like that. Making it great again. And I wonder if, like, after all that he's been through, having to kind of face, like, oh God, I used to want to be the I used to want to like be in charge mm-hmm. of all of like I, this was my blood right and maybe that was part of just why he jumped <laughs> cuz he was like no I can't yeah. reckon with this right now uh I don't know I'm not trying to defend Theon No I I under I think I think it was a good choice to have him have that break because mm-hmm. he's not just going to suddenly be a hero, be a hero. and like that would charge suck yeah. too. charge yeah. Euron, who just killed two experienced fighters. I hope Yara gets away. And and yeah. like Yara is no slouch. I either. don't want her to be like a prize he needs to rescue. That yeah. would suck. That would she's, suck a um, lot. She's awesome. Oh, she's not long for this world. No. But no. I mean, like no one is. Yeah. Except maybe John. That's it. I don't know. Yeah. Sam. Sure. <laughs> Sam's gonna st- Sam's gonna still be standing at the end. Someone's gotta tell the story. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and that person and that is, is me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, oh my god. Yeah. Like Sam discovers like how like the secrets of immortality and like it becomes George R. R. Martin and that's how it ends. <laughs> <laughs> we can only hope. It's, yeah. It is, well, the end is revealed that it's all the actual. It's actually the future after nuclear winter. Yeah. And. 
it's the re you know it's a new society and it, it was Earth all along. Yeah, <laughs> Battlestar you, Galactica. Yeah. <laughs> you bastards. I think we should probably wrap it up. Yeah. It looks like this video lag is, yeah, uh, this is real bad. Things, cool. So that sucks. Next week so looks a... really fun. Euron's going to be a little a hero. A lot of Euron stuff in the preview. A lot of Euron and Cersei stuff. There'll probably just be two scenes. Yeah. But she only had the She, she only had, had the one. 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 Yeah. No, she had two. She had two. Uh, the skull. Oh. Yeah. 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 But yeah cool. Um, I enjoyed this discussion. I enjoyed this episode. I enjoyed this episode, too. I liked both. I enjoyed last week's episode, too. I, I yeah. watched it again today. Oh, yeah. nice. I like this season a lot so far. Yeah. We'll you know see. why I think it's it's going to be pretty much solid from here on out? It's because I think now they're getting back to the point where they're like, they have the tracks that George R. R. Martin gave them. I think like for a while, they were like, okay, we have our end game but we're past the books and we kind of have to just make up all this crap in the middle. But now I think they're getting back to that point again. Mm. They're on like the other end of that bell curve where it's like, okay, we have stuff. We're like, we know it's going to happen this way in the books. And that's when it gets good is when they just adapt stuff George wrote. 